Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes! May the saints above see fit that he comes back in time. Where'd you get that wallet? It's not yours, is it? Oh, no, it isn't. Uh, but would you believe me if I told you I lifted it from a pickpocket? No. You what? Yes. He lifted it from that gentleman over there, and as he passed me in full flight, I lifted it from him. Yeah. Well, don't you think it'd be good to give it back to the owner before he leaves? Ah, better than that. I'll place it back in his pocket without him even being aware that it was taken in the first place. Oh, Holmes. Ah, but this is far harder than lifting a wallet and requires diligent training. Now, watch me closely, Watson. shirt and the shamrock in his buttonhole. I'd also conclude that he was a typesetter by the ink-stained condition of his fingernails. Look, Holmes, that's neither here nor there. The man is in our flat. Do you know him? Oh, I've never clapped eyes on him before in my life. Hey! Hey! I don't like to disturb you, but... Hey, what, what, what time is it? Four o'clock. Oh, good. We've still got eight hours. Look, if you're a human being at all, you'll be helping me, Mr. Holmes. My name is Watson. Oh. There's Mr. Holmes. Mr. Holmes, my name's Brian O'Casey. A man of propriety, poor as I am. Oh, and Mother, forgive me. I, I wouldn't be breaking in here this way at all, only I'm the most desperate of men. Yes, yes, so I gather from your note, Mr. O'Casey. You obviously shoved it under the door, ran away, and then returned, fearing I might have overlooked it, eh? Oh, well, the cat might have run off with it. Or a wee mouse. Oh, we haven't got a wee mouse here. Oh, well, you know what I mean. I, I, I didn't want to be missing you. Not with 8,000 pounds at stake. So I came back here and I let myself in so that I'd be waiting for you. Yes, well, that's most understandable, Mr. O'Casey. Now, perhaps you'd like to sit down and have a rest. Oh, thank you very much. Do, do you know something? My heart's beating like a trip hammer. Yes, I expect it is. You were saying something about uh, 8,000 pounds. Well, that's the amount that's due to me. But unless I can get hold of Mr. Snowby midnight tonight, I'll not get a penny of it. Who is this man, Snow? Well, he's the man who's holding the last third of this ticket. You see, he's holding numbers three and four. And without these, we can't... Just a minute, Mr. Casey. Uh, I realize that time is of the essence, and I should very much like to help you indeed. But perhaps you'll be good enough to uh, start and tell your story right from the beginning. Oh. Yes, of course. But where does it begin? Now, 
Perhaps it begins with this terrible feeling of homesickness I have. It came on me all of a sudden, and it got worse and worse until... I, I couldn't look at anything that didn't remind me of me home in County Killarney. Well, anyway, I was walking along this lunchtime, and I saw this woman, Belle Rogers. And, well, you might have seen her yourself. In the Marylebone Road. May the saints punish me if I'm lying. She didn't know me at all. But she smiled at me. I wasn't taught to be a fool. I lit off as fast as me feet could carry me. <laughs> Another glass of stove, if you please. Casey, I saw you in front of the bakery shop just now, but you got away before I could get your attention. Oh, hurry, Albert. What was the big rush? Oh, I'm telling you, Albert, a man has to look out for himself in this city. What do you mean? Look, as plain as I'm standing here, she smiled at me, right out in public. Who? That's Irene in the bakery window. No. Twice. What's the time? Well, how the devil would I be after knowing that? You mean you didn't find out? Well, can't you see, man, that's exactly what you wanted me to do. Oh, I find good luck. Good luck, you say? <laughs> now, look here, Albert Snow. I, 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 I don't mean any disrespect to your country, but the fact is, I've been saving me money for one reason only. And that's to get back to Ireland as soon as possible. And, and, and no temptress with a honey tongue is going to flamboozle me out of it. Oh, Casey, you may be doing the poor girl an injustice. Ah, but look, the, the, the fact is that she smiled at a perfect stranger. And in a certain way. Now, look, no woman is going to do that unless she's interested in getting the poor fool's money. Now. Stay close by me. She's followed me here. Oh, there you are. I didn't think she'd run off when I smiled. Well, what, what, what do you want? What do you want with me? It's in the window you belong. I only want to talk to you. Ask her to sit down. But, but look, this is no place for a woman. This is a tavern, you know. You ruin your reputation here. People won't buy the cakes you make. I'll only be a moment. Right here, Miss. Uh... Rogers. Miss Rogers. Bill Rogers. There's a name for you. Beautiful. My name is Snow. Albert Snow. This is my friend, Mr. Brian O'Casey. How do you do? Come on, Brian, sit down. Oh. Oh, boys. Now listen, Mr. O'Casey. Yes? Would you be willing to give me a pound? You see, I told you so. No, wait, let me finish. Yes, let the little lady finish. It's an investment. I'd like you to be my partner in something. What kind of something? A sweepstake ticket. A sweepstake ticket? Yes. I've got one, and I'd like you to buy half of it from me. I don't understand any of this at all. Call it superstition, Mr. O'Casey. You see, I noticed you were an Irishman from the bakery window. That four-leaf clover in your buttonhole. And since everybody knows the Irish are lucky, I'd like an Irishman to be my partner. Well, it isn't for a woman to be gambling. Oh, perhaps not. But think, think if we win, we'll divide 24,000 pounds. Aye, and if we lose, which is much more likely, I'll be out a pound, which is half a week's pay. Now, wait a minute. Oh, I've got an idea. Why don't the three of us share a ticket? You can afford that much, can't you, Casey? It'd be going against fate to turn down a gesture like that. Fate? It's kismet, oh, Casey. But I, I, I've never won anything in my life. But all the better. The law of averages is on your side. Do you have the ticket with you, miss? Yes. Yeah. 
one, six, six, three, four. Does that sound like a lucky number or doesn't it? Well, I, I suppose I could chance 13 shillings. That's the spirit. Now, wait a minute. Who's going to keep this ticket? We could tear it up three ways, and each one of us keep a piece. That way, no one person would hold the ticket and be able to desert the rest. Now, that's fair. In order to cash in, we've all three got to come together again. Here, old Casey, tear it in three parts. Well, now, look, we'll all have to keep our stubs in a safe place because if one of us loses his, all three of us would suffer. Right. Now, shall we seal the partnership? One, six, six, six three, three, four. four. The extra sweepstake tickets drawn. Lucky numbers listed. Extra, extra sweepstake tickets drawn. Lucky paper, sir. Lucky numbers listed. Extra, extra sweep. You want a paper, sir? Oh, 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 oh yes, yes, I think so. Extra, extra sweepstake tickets drawn. Lucky numbers listed. Get your midday paper. Please be here. I know other people want to win as much as I do, but I'm hoping so much to see the source of Ireland again. One, six, six, three, four. Oh. One, six. Oh, no. It's not the first one. Oh, well, maybe it'll be the second. No, no, no. Take it easy, Brian, boy. There, there, there's still five more numbers. Oh. Let Albert Snow. I was mad to let him talk me into this. Kismet. Fate. Hm. I'm going to be owed 13 shillings. That's what my fate's going to be. us now is, shall we sell the ticket or hold on to it and go all the way? Vernon Dream, our horses are 20 to 1 short, but he could win. I say, I say let's go all the way. Oh, well, I'm not that much of a gambling man myself. But Mr. O'Casey, you just admitted you were lucky. You can't desert us now. Us? What, what, what do you mean by us? Do you mean you both decided already? Well, uh, Bell and I have been seeing a bit of each other. Actually, we speculated on what we would do if our ticket was drawn. Oh, Casey, wouldn't you like to be rich? Oh, well, sure, and I would, but... Let's put it to the vote. Majority wins. Uh, no, wait a minute, Bell. Of course, we'd outvote him. But I think in a case like this, since we're all friends, a decision like this should be made unanimously. How about it, O'Casey? Oh, Come in with us. So Vernon Dream. <laughs> hey, waiter, I'd have another beer. As long as he's paying for it. <laughs> <laughs>
Burning Dream 1. Burning Dream 1! Did you hear? Vernon Dream One. It's rich we all are. Yes. I heard. Where's Snow? I don't think he's coming. What do you mean he's not coming? He's got a third of our ticket. He has to come. I've been looking for him since last week when he broke an appointment with me. Mr. O'Casey, he's disappeared. Disappeared? Well, that was ten days ago, Mr. Holmes. And disappear he has, right off the face of the earth. And a third of the ticket along with him. I see. And uh, now you only have until uh, midnight to find him, eh? Well, that's when the ticket becomes invalid. At midnight tonight, on the dock. Yes, yes. Well, that's serious indeed. Hmm, I should say so. Well, look, do you think you can do something to help us? Oh, I was told if anyone could perform a miracle, it was you. Well, that's a little exaggerated, but I'll do my best. Uh, where can I get in touch with you, Mr. Casey? Well, you'll be finding me at the Golden Coach Inn tonight. Miss Rogers and I decided to stay there until closing time, in case Albert should turn up. Oh, good, good. Well, I'll, I'll look for you there, then. Right, thank yeah. you very much. Oh, uh, Mr. Holmes, I, uh... I noticed you playing with those cards, and uh, it didn't miss me glance that you made one disappear. Yes, yes. Well, it's uh, not very difficult, you know, once you've got the knack. Oh, I imagine not only... Uh, I reckon the lights ought to be kind of low, because uh, I saw you put one uh, right there. Oh, yes, yes, that's right. Yes, well, uh, well, a good day, Mr. Casey. Good, good day, day, Mr. Holmes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, well, I'll... Uh, I'll work it out in time. <laughs> Why don't you give it up altogether? I was referring to the disappearance of uh, Mr. Snow. Oh. Where are you going? We are going to the baker's shop to see Miss Rogers, Watson. About what? It's almost five o'clock, Watson. We have just seven hours until midnight. This won't take more than a minute. Good afternoon. I'd like to speak to Miss Rogers. Is she here? She left this morning. Oh? Why? Don't ask me. When I arrived, she was gone. There was only a note from her saying she'd taken one of the 12 layer cakes, which she would pay for in the morning. Aha. Uh -huh. Was it by any chance a white cake? One of my very best. Mm. Thank you very much for the information. Good afternoon. I was right, Watson. Drive on, Cammy. Take it easy. Come on. Sit yourself down. It's all right. Oh, what's the matter? What's happened? The police. They found his coat in the river. Albert's? Yes, it was all bloodstained and there was a bullet hole in it. Oh, no. And the ticket's somewhere at the bottom of the river. What are you going to do? I'm going to throw my stub into the fire and watch it burn. It's useless now. Oh, but Miss Rogers, I... 
there. Now give me your stuff. It was my idea to split up the ticket. I deserve to see my mistake all the way through. You may as well, Mr. Casey. With Miss Rogers' stuff destroyed, yours, I'm afraid, has no value. But you told me there was hope. Yes, I know. I'm sorry. I was mistaken. You may destroy it now, Miss Rogers, if you wish. Now it's all finished and done with. We're so high of seeing the shores of Ireland soon again. But no. <laughs> yes, yes, perhaps a little tea would improve your spirits, eh? I can still see the picture of those two at that inn. Take me a long time to get over that, Holmes. Oh, I think you'll get over it sooner than you imagine. Holmes, what? Leisure domain, my dear fellow. The hand deceives the eye. This afternoon, after I left you, I palmed a piece of another sweepstake ticket on Miss Belle Rogers. Neat, eh? Would you like a little whiskey in your tea? It'd do you good, you know, and help you sleep. Blast the tea, Holmes. You're hiding something from me. Well, nothing really, except that it occurred to me that Snow and Bell Rogers had contrived to cheat O'Casey out of his money. I was absolutely certain of this when we visited the baker's shop, and I found out that she had taken a large white cake. Look, well, what's that got to do with anything? A large white cake, very appropriate for marriage, don't you think, Watson? You think they were married? Or about to be? Yes, but that still doesn't tell me what kind of a scheme they had. Well, it was really quite ingenious. Snow would go into hiding and at the crucial moment, give the impression that he'd been murdered. Now, this was the cue for Miss Rogers to give up hope and throw her stub onto the fire. Ah, yes, but it wasn't the real stub, the one that she had obtained, as I did. Now, very artfully, she would get O'Casey's stub from him and pretend to do the same. You... Uh, you mean she really kept O'Casey's stub and destroyed a dummy one? <laughs> exactly. Now, she and Snow would have had a complete ticket if I hadn't substituted a dummy of my own. Well, that's amazing, Holmes. Fantastic. Well, the whole thing makes sense now. Or does it? After all, you've no proof of anything. Your whole theory is just a series of inferences. If once your premise is wrong, the whole structure collapses. Naturally, my dear Watson. Rogers, and this is the missing Mr. Snow. I think you'd better fetch your case in now, Watson. I can't predict what his feelings will be when he sees you, but you know what Irish tempers are. Why, is he Holmes? Yes? Don't you think Mr. O'Casey's third share is worth at least half? Oh, yes. Yes, quite right, Watson. At least a half. <laughs> 